the chainsaw. A wonderfully simple concept that gets the job done. A gasoline-powered two-stroke engine drives a chain outfitted with sharp metal teeth. An 18-inch chainsaw running at three horsepower will easily cut all the timber you want and save a lot of sweat. Could a similar concept work for cutting through much harder material, like solid bedrock? What would such a machine look like? It looks like this, the giant rock cutting machine known as a chain trencher. And the biggest chain trencher in the world is the Aztec Underground 1860 HD. The Aztec Underground 1860 HD chain trencher. Total weight, 350,000 pounds. Engines, two Caterpillar diesels, one at 1,200 horsepower, the other at 300. Fuel consumption, 75 gallons per hour. Maximum chain length, 35 feet. A chain trencher is a specially designed piece of construction equipment made specifically for excavating hard rock and digging it out in a trench for laying in utilities. For exceptionally deep or long trenches, contractors call on the 1860. This machine can go up to 30 feet deep. We're uh, currently, right now, we have a machine going to Israel that's going to cut 50 feet deep. The 1860, I cut in Africa. We cut a job there, and we cut 8 feet wide, 12 feet deep for a 72-inch gas line that went all the way through Morocco. That job took us a year and a half to cut it. There are only nine 1860s in the world, and people generally remember the first time they saw one. When you actually see one of these machines in production in hard rock, you can actually feel the ground vibrate as it is ripping the ground apart below it. So it uh, shakes quite a bit. There's two main engines in there, and uh, with all that vibration, that chain digging up the earth, it just bounces all around. Six of the world's nine 1860s are owned by H.L. Chapman Pipeline Construction in Texas where hard bedrock sits just inches under the surface, across much of the state. Definitely a job for one of the world's biggest machines. Although it's not difficult to spot the business end of a chain trencher, less obvious is the fact that the digging boom is actually the rear of the machine. The sheer weight of the front end, engines, treads, and a giant gas tank helps the chain dig in. So you get penetration and production. Weight and horsepower equal production in these machines. The 1,200 horsepower Caterpillar 3512, easily the larger of the two engines, is dedicated to powering the cutting chain only. The chain is mechanically, not hydraulically driven. It's uh, very important to get all the power to the ground. And we found that we can do that much more efficiently with the mechanical drive trencher system. A separate 300 horsepower engine drives the hydraulically powered crawler tracks, which move the mighty machine along at speeds up to approximately one mile per hour. Uh, so the machine does move very slow. And then in the work condition, when you're actually digging a trench, uh, that speed may be as, as slow as two or three feet per minute to 10 or 15 feet per minute. The track system is designed more for torque and pulling power. The second engine also powers various hydraulic devices. Basically, we're controlling our conveyor, the shift, and the rotation of our conveyor, the raise and lowering of the boom, and then our track drives. And then, of course, the heart of the machine, the, the head shaft where the digging boom attaches, we're actually excavating the rock. If you're familiar with the chainsaw, this is essentially the screw that you would use to adjust the chain on your chainsaw. However, our boom is significantly longer than the bar on a typical chainsaw. Um, because of the extra weight, we use one eight-inch grease cylinder on either side of the boom. Uh, as you apply pressure, it slides the whole boom out, and then we apply some shims to maintain that, that distance. Despite their striking resemblance, to call these machines giant chainsaws doesn't really do them justice. Chain trenchers are a highly specialized and extremely precise class of machinery, beginning with the cutting chain itself. The carbide steel teeth are arranged for maximum punishment to the rock surface. 
This is our standard chevron pattern. It's on all our machines. This, this is the number one strike tooth. What this does is it goes through. It actually makes a mark into the, the rock. As the second tooth comes in, it strikes here. This, this little area right here will frack out and become the chip. These teeth are self-sharpening. They actually will keep a point on the tooth, which helps the longevity of the tooth, which helps keep the cost down for the contractor. The steady striking pattern, like an endless one-two punch, pounds away at the rock. Ideally, it also results in large, consistent chips, which can then be used as trench lining material. This is typical size of smaller trenchers. This is the chips that we want to get because this means production. Precision is also key in controlling the chain trencher's path. Without it, such a powerful machine operating in often sensitive underground environments could lead to disaster. Uh, you may have an existing gas line, water utilities that are already in the ground, and the contractor has to come back and lay a new line in the same right of way. And he may only have a couple of feet, sometimes less clearance between existing live wires or gas line. A laser guided positioning system directs the operator as he rips through the rock, keeping the trencher level and its path ramrod straight. We've got a pole that sits on top of the boom, and uh, then we've got a receiver on the inside. Uh, that allows uh, me to know if I'm up or down. I've got three lights in there. The green is dead on. Uh, I've got an upper yellow and a lower yellow. Uh, they are within two tenths. The accuracy of the 1860 chain trencher also makes the serious business of cutting rock safer. This bore pit has the square walls because of the trencher cutting ability. This enables safety. This keeps the personnel down in the pit from big rocks falling on their head, and that hurts. Chain trenchers fit in perfectly in Texas, where everything is, as they say, bigger. But these machines and the men who maintain them are world travelers. We have machines running throughout the Middle East, Europe, pretty much throughout the entire world. If there's rock, uh, we typically have a machine there. But it takes more than one type of big machine to make rock do what we want. And sometimes, we want it crushed. <laughs>